So I'm speaking to Tom Campbell today, who was the former principal of Fullhurst. And we're speaking as part of the 30 Stories campaign, which is to celebrate the 30 years, the 30th anniversary of Fullhurst Community College. So thank you, Tom, for your time. Um, I'll start by asking, what did you want to be when you were younger? Oh, that, what a difficult opening question. Um, I think, to be honest, I think I'm still undecided as, as we speak. Um, yeah, that's a really tough question to ask and a tough question to answer, regardless of your age. Um, when I grew up, I grew up just outside Glasgow. My dad was a bus driver uh, and my mum was a nursery nurse. She worked uh, as, as a childminder and then, then in nurseries. Um, so I didn't really know many career paths other than what most people know what their parents do. And then perhaps they know teachers and perhaps nurses or people that work in healthcare. So yeah, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And uh, I've never quite uh, squared that off. I've still potentially got some ambitions to do something different. So uh, yeah, probably not unlike many of the students at Fullhurst, no idea what I wanted to do. So then how did you end up becoming a teacher? So um, I really enjoyed school. Um, I um, was unusual uh, in the school that I attended and, and also in terms of the context of my family situation. I was, I was the first person in my family to stay on at school past the age of 16. Um, did my uh, Scottish hires, um, equivalent to A-levels. I went to university, so um, that was all new to me. So I wasn't quite uh, aware of the graduate careers, like why do you go to university and what job do you do? So because I was so unclear on, on jobs and career, I, I studied a subject which I was just really interested in, um, and that was psychology. So I did a degree in psychology, and psychology is all about how people learn, how they behave, um, really, really interesting, fascinating subject, and I, I really loved it. Um, and then, as I was getting to the end of that degree, uh, deciding, you know, where where's this going to take me? Uh, I was still a bit unsure as to what sort of job I, I would be happy uh, doing. Um, so I started to look at teaching, uh, and of course, teaching is one of those jobs where you are applying psychology um, all of the time whether that be uh, research around managing and predicting uh, behaviour, behaviour of students, colleagues. Um, it's about the science of learning and the brain. So it just seemed a really interesting opportunity to apply much of what I was learning in my degree to a real life situation. Um, and, and that got me really interested in the whole science of teaching and learning. Um, teachers nowadays uh, are generally very interested in uh, research and how that applies uh, to teaching and learning to the classroom. Uh, but when I started teaching 20 years ago, uh, it wasn't really that well understood. Um, so, uh, you know, I enjoyed sort of introducing that aspect to the schools which, which I worked. Um, I've always enjoyed working with people, I've always enjoyed helping people, wanting to make a difference, wanting to inspire kids that were just like me um, when I was younger, just needing someone from outside of the family to, to, to say, this is what you could be capable of, this is what you could do. So uh, teaching was a good opportunity uh, to, to, to feel like I was making a difference as well as applying some of what I'd learned at university. Good. Um, and then, so how did it come about that you were principal at Fullhurst? Right, okay. Um, well, the, there's a few people who tell different stories about this um, because it was a really difficult time for Fullhurst uh, before I arrived. Um, it, it was in quite a lot of difficulty as a school. There'd been about nine different head teachers in about four years. Um, so the advert uh, in the national press uh, had a, a vacancy for a head teacher at England's most challenging school. And that was the advert. And if you think about what Full Hustle was like around, you know, 2008, 2009, then certainly it, it, it lived up to the billing. 
Um, and it was a bit of a dark period, really, in the history of, of Fullhurst and its relationship with uh, the community, but also in terms of standards and uh, the sorts of outcomes that, that, that pupils were, were leaving the school with. So I, as a young, ambitious teacher, had spent most of my career thinking that the people who were managing me, who were running schools, were absolutely useless. And the, what this school needed was someone who just knew what they were doing, which was clearly me. And so I applied for the job uh, and it's the only job I had I'd applied for. Um, I was a deputy head in a large uh, Leicestershire uh, school um, in Hinckley. So I had some experience in school leadership, um, but I decided I was going to apply for this. And people thought I was bonkers. Uh, because of the situation the school found itself in. Um, and the chair of governors, who is the present chair of governors, Rick Moore, he was on the interview panel and he decided to take a punt on uh, this guy uh, who had very little experience. And, um, you know, I, I, I've really got no idea why they, why they chose me. Um, but I certainly put my hand up to do what was being described as a tough job. Um, and when the governors appointed me back in uh, 2010, um, it, it made me the youngest principal in England. Uh, so I was just 30 years old. So again, I think people thought I was bonkers for uh, applying for the job, but I think people thought Rick Moore was bonkers for giving me the job. Um, here was this challenge in school requiring uh, you know, a ton around, and here was he appointing uh, someone with almost no experience and who'd never worked, I'd never worked in, in, in Leicester. Um, so yeah, that was, that was how I came to Fullhurst. And then, thank you, that ties in quite nicely to my next question, which is, what was Fullhurst like when you first started and then how is it different to what it's like now? Wow, okay. Um, so yeah, Fullhurst then, and I don't think people uh, would mind me, you know, not saying this. I think I think it's the reality, um, and it's no disrespect to you know the people who were working at the school at the time or leading the school at the time. It was just a, a difficult period in, in history, uh, but yeah, standards at the school were rock bottom. Um, of three and a half thousand secondary schools in England, Fulhurst was in the bottom ten. So you can imagine that. Pupils didn't really want to come to that school. So because of that, we had, you know, quite small numbers of, of pupils and therefore we didn't necessarily have budget to invest in developing the school. Um, we struggled to keep staff because there were behaviour issues and teachers were not enjoying working in a special measures environment uh, that, that was there at the time. So there are all those difficulties. However, there were also some incredible opportunities. So the school had just been rebuilt. So the, the great new, uh, and it still feels new, even when you walk around today, you know, that the, the extension behind the original block, that had just been completed as part of building schools for the future. So there was a lot of investment in the building and it transformed the environment. So we had this inspirational school and it set us uh, an ambition to, could we, um, you know, respond to that challenge and could we make the school, not only does it look like the best school in Leicester, but could it be the best school in, in Leicester? So there was a lot of optimism um, and excitement despite the challenges that we had at the time. So that's, that's pretty much how it was when we came in. So obviously, um, over the years, we started to what really hard on raising standards which we did we worked really hard on making the school good and you know one of the biggest uh, successes that we had was when um, Ofsted graded the school good and that was the first ever time that a school in West Leicester had ever been graded good so it was the first time Fullhurst had ever been graded good in its history but it was the full, first time any school in West of Leicester had been uh, graded good and we slowly um, improved outcomes um, and we sort of followed Leicester City's 
um, example, the football club, because when Leicester City were in League One, that's when Fulhurst was probably special measures and struggling. But the year that Leicester City won the Premier League is the year that Fulhurst finished number one school in Leicester. Um, and that, that was quite an interesting um, story when you when you take the fortunes of the football club with the fortunes um, of, of Fulhurst. So I suppose if you think about Fulhurst today and, and, and recently, obviously the, the, the school's much bigger. So because of that success, more pupils wanted to come to the school and we had to then build another school over the road to to accommodate those numbers. So to think sort of 10, 11 years ago um, that, that Fulhurst would be so popular a school that we'd have to literally build more buildings, that would have been, you know, really ambitious. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. Um, if you think about the um, reputation of the school and how parents, so many parents want to send the children to Fulhurst for, for a quality education, um, again, you know, we wouldn't necessarily have expected that. Um, in terms of the teachers, you know, the teachers we've got are fantastic and we've kept them there because they enjoy the environment, they enjoy working together. It's a really great uh, place to work. Um, again, it, it didn't feel like that. It was stressful and difficult. But now I think people are, um, are, are enjoying and, and, and have for some time enjoyed working at, at, at Fulhurst. And the reputation of the school nationally, you know, gaining the um, the Pupil Premium Award for supporting uh, the work with children from disadvantaged backgrounds, the number of pupils that, that went to Fulhurst that have now gone on successfully through post-16 in universities um, is really inspiring. Um, so I think it's a very, very different place. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that it still feels like Fulhurst and those relationships with the pupils and the staff are as strong now as they, as they ever were then. Yes, um, I definitely agree with that. And I think it's quite remarkable that um, Full has managed to change so much in a short period of time. Um, and then you've covered this briefly, but what were the biggest challenges and then the biggest rewards from your time at Fullhurst? Yeah, so I think the challenge was actually uh, convincing uh, the full husk community so that was the kids and the parents and, and 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 people who live in and around the school um i think it was about raising their aspiration and ambition and convincing the people in the school that they could achieve the highest grades and that full husk could be the best school not only in leicester but one of the best schools in england um, and that was certainly my ambition. And the challenge was to get people to believe it. Um, I used to start assemblies with New Year sevens. And I know we just missed each other, Oliver, but you would have had this assembly from me had I been there. And even when that room was half empty, right at the beginning, where we maybe only had, you know, 90 people in the year group instead of the 300 or so that we have now. You know, and I used to say to those children, that you think you've picked this school, but you've not. We've picked you. And the reason we've picked you is that we see something in you that others have yet to see. We see excellence. We see ambition. We see a commitment to improve your future life. And we want to work with you on that. And we want to support you over the next five years to get you where you should be not where you think you might be. Um, and then and, and that was part of the, the narrative around convincing people that they could be exceptional. And so many students went on to achieve exceptional outcomes um, that, that they began to believe it. They became examples to other students who became examples to other students. And we started creating a culture of excellence and aspiration. But I think that was the biggest challenge because people doubted themselves. People had had previous difficult experiences in school or in primary school. Um, you know, they, they, they wanted to dream big, but just felt nervous about the risk that that presented if they possibly failed. Um, so we wanted to take that risk away and, 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 and really encourage people to uh, strive for their absolute best. I think that was the biggest challenge. And the rewards I've described, that was, that was seeing people 
um, achieve that. But also seeing people enjoy life at Fullhouse because it wasn't just about let's get you the best maths grades you possibly can. You know, um, some of the things that I, I look back on that I was really proud about Fullhouse were things like we um, introduced a radio station, you know, Fullhouse event full power. Um, so we created our radio station broadcast. 24-7 uh, with a number of radio shows led by students. We had a farm. So next to the sports hall, we had a farm. We had our own animals. We had the huge gardens. Um, we used to harvest crops and, you know, uh, feed uh, families as well as uh, use them for celebrations for staff. So there were these things that meant the school wasn't just about standards of education. It was about exposing uh, pupils to opportunities that they might not have got otherwise um, and experiences that meant that they wanted to come to school and of course if you want to come to school then you're there you're with us you're in lessons you're gonna learn um, and so we just found as many things we could do whether that was you know table tennis where we became you know national champions or or whether it was um, challenging me to play pool in the um, reception area. I have to say I was there for seven years unbeaten. Um, on, there is an ex-student called Ladis who might eventually watch this. He used to tell people he beat me at pool. He did not win a single game, I can assure you that. But anyway, it was the fun. It was just the, the banter and the relationships, which I think help people uh, enjoy their time in the school. And that's still seen today because there's so many other activities that still go on at the school, like, like the table tennis and other clubs that happen um, and then so what were your most memorable moments and experiences from your time at Fullhurst? Memorable moments and experiences so um, just so many I think I, I, I have to say that that I really really miss uh, being at Fullhurst even now and I've been gone well, as long as you've been in that school so four and a half years you know also um, and I do miss it uh, I miss the, the relationships um, with pupils. Um, you know, there were some days I used to feel like all I did all day was to shout at people and get involved in, you know, issues or incidents. But but that was just because I cared so much about the school and wanted it to be as great as it possibly could be. Um, but I really enjoyed celebrating success with pupils. So I used to enjoy pupils coming to my office to show me bits of what that they were doing. Um, something I enjoy now is whenever I go to Leicester or Foss Park, um, I always have a young person comes up to me to say, oh, Mr. Campbell, how are you? And it, it's an ex host pupil uh, that remembers me and I more often than not remember them and remember the name because that was really important to me at the time. And they tell me what they're doing now and they remind me of a funny story uh, about what happened at school and, you know, whether they got into trouble or whether they came to show me some work. And I think that's, you know, absolutely fantastic. And I really miss, miss that relationship. So I was really pleased when you phoned and said you wanted to have this conversation because it just re really helped me sort of relive the memories of what it would have been like um, had it still been at Full House today. And so what have you been doing since you left Fullhurst? So I'm still involved in education. Um, so as I was uh, leaving Fullhurst, I was uh, working for Ofsted as an Ofsted inspector. Uh, I uh, went to work for a multi-academy trust. So the experience I'd gained uh, in my headship at Fullhurst, I've now applied to working with a number of other schools. So my role at the moment is Chief Education Officer for Greenwood Academies Trust. So my job is I'm responsible for 37 schools all across the East Midlands, and some of them are primary schools, secondary schools, special schools. So, uh, yeah, um, I've, I've, I've taken that experience of, of, of full host and, and tried to capture some of the lessons learned and then share them with schools on a big scale. Uh, I do some advisory work for the Department for Education. So again, I bring bring some of that experience from working in Leicester and working at Fullhurst and try and help shape some of the policy, uh, for some education policy that, that, that feeds into the government. 
Um, and because I just love learning and, and, and really passionate about continuing that, I've actually uh, combined the job with I'm now a student at the University of Cambridge. So I'm, uh, I now attend Cambridge University doing an executive MBA, which is a, a master's degree in business and administration. So I'm uh, looking at leadership in other organisations like Google, Amazon, Apple, and comparing that to the sort of experience that I've developed in schools and, you know, learning more about the world of business and banks. So um, maybe that will lead to some sort of career change in the future. I don't know. I've still got another 26 years of work before I retire. So uh, there's still plenty of time to do something else. It sounds like you've been um, very busy. Um, and then finally, do you have any advice for anybody who wants to become a teacher or a principal? Well, I'm, I'm not sure about advice. I mean, I, I work with lots of new teachers um, to the profession and, you know, I really enjoy uh, talking to them and, and training and supporting or mentoring new head teachers. Um, but I would say that teaching is a fantastic career. Uh, I've certainly gained a huge amount uh, out of uh, the job. Um, it's taken me to really interesting places. Um, and, and, and you feel, certainly feel, particularly in the context of Full Host, that you're making a difference uh, and you get really close to the people that you work with. Uh, so you develop some really strong relationships um, uh, and, and you feel that you're both working hard um you've got a good job but also you're making a difference to the community and that's what that's what people in other jobs often lack they work really hard but they can't see the difference that they're making to the community or to society and i think teachers can and that's one of the most you know rewarding aspects of the job it's very hard um you know teachers work extremely long hours um and it's tough but if you're passionate about the curriculum and you've got a subject that you love um, and that you can develop good relationships with young people and you can support and guide them as they grow and mature and uh, then it's an incredibly rewarding job. So um, thank you Tom for your time, um, it's been good to speak to you, I hope you've um, enjoyed it as well and I hope that if you're watching it that you've enjoyed watching it.